Hi, my name is Pinky Gilani and this is Pinky TV. You are watching What Women Want Online. This is season three and the theme is Unlearn. If you are watching us on Facebook, make sure you drop a comment and let us know where you are watching from. And if you are on YouTube joining us, make sure you subscribe to this channel so you are amongst the first to catch conversations like this. Remember, on this show, we have conversations with real people who are completely open and completely honest about their journeys and we are privileged always to have amazing people joining us. Today we are joined by Joki Muhoho. Hi Joki. Hi Pinky, how are you? I'm good. So yeah. we were working it out. How long have we known each other for? 20, 25 years. Almost. A long time. A long time. We are old. <laughs> no, are we? We're not old. There's nothing wrong with being old. Absolutely. But we are wise. I think so. We're very wise. Wiser. Yes, wiser. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So on this show, Jockey, what we're doing is we're teaching our audience members something new. In the previous seasons, I would introduce um, our guest, but now we want our guests to learn how to own, um, how to absolutely be unapologetic about owning who they are. So I'm telling my guests to introduce themselves. Okay. Um, I'm Jockey Mohoho. I am as old as Kenyan independence. And I guess I'm one of those few women who will broadcast their age anytime, anywhere, because <laughs> I'm proud of every minute, every second of my age. Wow. And for those who might not know how old Kenya is, you know, Kenya is 57 years old, and that's my age. I love it. Yes. You know, um, maybe 20 odd years ago, I read a, a quote that a woman who reveals her age is ready to reveal anything. Mm -hmm. So at that time, at that young, impressionable age, I was yes. like, oh my God, this is why, you know, you yes. don't reveal your age because mm -hmm. it means that you're... Yes. Um, but then my mom taught me to age gracefully yes. because age is inevitable. I know. So this is why yeah. I completely own my age. I love it. I know. And, and your mom was very right. Remember, I met you with her the yes, other day. Yes. And she just looks so great, so graceful, so legal. You know, yes, I mean, absolutely. she's just amazing. Thank yes. you. Thank yes, you so yes. much. Mm. But, you know, Joki Muhoho is not just 57 years old. She is also a series of accomplishments and achievements. Let's hear about those. <laughs> I don't know whether I would call myself as a series or packed with achievements and all that um, because there's a lot more that I haven't achieved that I would like to but that doesn't mean I feel a failure. Yes. I'm quite happy with who I am now, what I have, what I've managed to do as well as what I don't have and what I haven't managed to do. That's what makes me me and makes me unique because there's no other jokey but me. Yes. There's no other clone of me so I'm happy with who I am. So you have had uh, 30 years in the corporate industry, am I right? Yes, I started off my career uh, as a management consultant, which is very kind of upside down, because in the developed world, people retire. When they retire, they become management consultants. <laughs> but in this part of the world, we we'll come out to the university and we're training consult consultants, yes. although we got trained by older, more experienced people. Um, and when I joined Pricewaterhouse at a very young age, that time it was Pricewaterhouse, not Pricewaterhouse Coopers. Yes. Coopers was our main competitor. We were like 65, 68% of the staff were foreigners, old white male. Wow. Thinks that we were not, because we're young black girls. <laughs> So wow. you can imagine growing your career at the time. So yes, I have 30 years experience in management consultancy. I do a lot of uh, strategic planning, organi organization development. Let's say I grow people and organizations. Let's, let's yes, wrap it up really like that. Do. Yes, you really yeah. do. <laughs> yeah. But now this yeah. other side of you. Then there's the other side of me, which I make no apologies for. I have about 20 years experience as a filmmaker. Yeah. And you remember you yes. were one of the uh, supporting characters yes. in, uh, in my first major TV drama series, I Changes. <laughs> that was way back in like 2000. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> that time, yes. So you see, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have that, the, the logical brain, the left brain, and I've used them all together. Yeah. And some people ask me, did you always want to be an artist and you are not allowed? By who, yes. you know? I mean, for us, 
I grew up in a family where whatever you wanted to be, you were. Amazing. Yes. Um, I have to tell you the story about my father when uh, he had never given me any career advice. Oh, let's begin with the last time my father saw my school report card was, I think, second term of Form 1. Wow. And first term, he said I had done poorly. Second time, I, wo I worked so hard and I kept waiting for him to open the envelope. You know how you know your school card is a ride-through post? Yes. Because you know the school envelope? Yes. And my dad wouldn't open the envelope. I kept putting it on, pile, on the top pile, on the top of the pile of mail, and you still throw it, you know, yeah. kind of at the bottom. I got impatient, and the last week of the holiday, I said, Dad, you haven't opened the report card. Here it is. Let's open it together. You see, I knew the contents, and I knew I'd done very well. Wow. And I think I was number three in class. Oh, wow. Having moved from like number 15 or 18, I yes. forget. And all my dad did was look at it and ask me, would you have developed an itch if you became number one? Because he was like, you're number three, so what was wrong with being number one? <laughs> so moving on, you know, that was the last time I gave him my report card. I decided it's my own responsibility. If I lead from the end or I lead from the front, that's up to me. That's basically what my dad is telling me. So nobody ever looked at my report card. And I was quite happy with that. Yeah. So come college. The day before college, I told dad, oh, by the way, dad, um, um, tomorrow I'm going to college. I have several suitcases. Um, I hope you I'll look at some time to drive me there. And he said, oh, really? Already? You're going to the university? You know, like I've just said, I'm going to mass, you know? <laughs> and I said, yeah. And then said, oh, incidentally, what are you going to study? So I told him, and he fell out laughing. And I said, why are you laughing? He said, you're going to be a teacher like me. You see, my dad was one of the first African teachers in the country. Right. That's why, and I think he lost his name a long time ago. It was just Mwalimu. Mwalimu. <laughs> yes. So, um, and I said, no, 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 it's strategic. It's deliberate. It's foundation, you know, because then I can study anything else after, with a business degree in education, you know, wow. then I can. And and then I thought, here's my golden chance to ask Daddy what he would like of his daughter, his last born daughter. So I said, Daddy, what would you have liked me to, what career do you think it's ideal for me? He said, me? Do you go to school for me? And then he said, look here, girl, if you become a robber, please, can you be a damn good robber? <laughs> If you decide that the ideal career for you, for yourself, is to sweep the, the city council streets. And those days we used to call city council Kajo. Yes. <laughs> so if you want to sweep Kajo streets, yeah. go ahead, do it. And do it real good that you write a bestseller on how to sweep the city council streets so well. That was the end of my career advice. So anybody out there who is asking me, why didn't you start off being a filmmaker? Why did you start off being a management consultant? Because that's the order of the things of how I wanted them to be. It wasn't anybody's influence. So you had a plan? I had a plan. And I told my dad then, because when I was going to college, that's when Goge Wathyong was getting in trouble with the government because of his play, uh, his play, and somehow, another long story for another show, some CIDs thought he had helped us write a play in our school and all that. So there was my hero going on exile. Wow. So why would I follow that career? Yeah. Well, as I love my country so much, and there's no way I could imagine at that young age that I would give up living in my own country. So I decided, and these are the words I gave my dad, I don't need a degree in literature to appreciate literal works. I will come back to it later. And that's exactly what I did. And what inside of you made you, what was the self-talk for you to say, okay, this is what I want to do now. I know I'll, because a lot of the times we are rushing through life. We think we don't have enough time or we think this is our one opportunity. What yes. made you say, okay, I can come back to that? At developing self-confidence and knowing you've been given a cloth 
and em embroidery threads. It's for you to embroider your life. And nobody finish, completes and finishes an embroidery piece in a marathon. It's a laborious <laughs> stitch by stitch. And then also, stop comparing yourself with other people. Yeah. If you compare yourself with other people, then you'll be in a hurry to be them. And you forget, even for them, it was a journey. So one thing to unlearn is, it's their life. You've got yours. Can you imagine, Pinky, the stupidity, sheer excellence in stupidity in trying to copy somebody else's life? You don't have the same DNA. You are not brought up in the same house. You probably don't have the, the same education. How stupid can one be? <laughs> the sheer excellence in it's stupidity. stupidity. It's so right. You know, today yeah. with social media, we're always yes. comparing. We're always looking at. We're yes. always trying to be something that yeah. we're not. Um, what is your advice? Because you work with a lot of young people. Yes. professionals and a, a lot of youngsters I'm sure that you mentor as well what's your advice to anybody who's watching who I think in social media and people post you know I've got a new car I've got my I've bought my my my, my wife or or my wife or my husband this big car we are living in this house I think if I was to respond to say I'd be like wow please give me the 10 steps you went through to get here mm. because I might learn from one of them yes I wonder if we all ask these people, how did you get here? Mm -hmm. I wonder what they would write. I worked hard. I mean, even the street boy on the streets work hard, begging. Yes. It hasn't given them a Mercedes Benz. Right. <laughs> so if they can't fill in the gap between what they were and what they are now, then I would suspect, first of all, Pinky, Lord forgive me. In Catholic Church, we say Mia Krupa, Mia Maxima, Mia Krupa. Um, if you're rich or if you've attained physical wealth and you have to broadcast it to the world, I have a big question mark. Maybe you know from where you came from or where you got it from, you didn't deserve it. Mm. Why are you broadcasting it? Right. Just go on with your life. From driving a Mkokotemi to driving a big Range Rover, you don't have to tell us, imagine I was driving this, now I drive this. Mm. Then you never had your incremental plan steps on how to get there. This Range Rover is probably acquired in different ways. And I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Do you believe in easy come, easy go? I believe in, if you're very lucky and, and fortunate, some things come your way and it does happen. You can load a big job. Yes. You could even win the lottery. Yes. And now people win millions in the yeah. local bets and all that. That can happen. The sadness or the disaster is when you see it as a destination. What we need to learn is that that is your new normal. So now, if that is the normal, then where are you heading to? Right. Yeah? Because if I was poor or struggling or just average person, and suddenly, for whatever reason, I, I, I get a lot of money, I, I, I become topping class, I, I get that first class honors mm -hmm. in, in whatever degree I was yeah. pursuing, I'm topping the, that profession or whatever, you see, you move from here to there. You are there, but your mentality is still here. Right. What should have happened is that this moves here. So this is now your new yes. zero level. So now, your new zero means now you look far ahead. So if people stop here to, 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 to glot, yes. it means your journey has ended. The only way is... <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, Jockey, where do you yes. get your, your work ethic from or your business ethic from? Because I know you are a hard worker and you have a lot of principles. Yes. Where does that come from? My father, I would say, so let's say my parents. Okay. My dad was a character. Yeah. I've just told you how yes. the advice he gave me for yeah. my career. And my dad, one of the things I tell my staff, if they come and if I ask, why haven't you printed this? Oh, the printer has refused to print. I go, Oh, <laughs> the printer has more brains than you? Uh -huh. 
you know, there's certain things that my daughter taught us, like you're given duties. We had so many chores to complete by the end of the day. And some of them were way beyond our ears and our capability. Right. And too much to do in a day. So every time you're struggling to put a, to put a dent into this long list of activities, right. that you, uh, um, tasks that you have to do in the course of the day. So that installed the discipline on of you never stop working. There's always one thing more to do. That's one. I was brought up in a family where gender and age was irrelevant. That's amazing. Some people didn't get lesser tasks because you were younger or yes. you were weaker or you are male or female. female yeah. That's why I'm such a tomboy. If my car doesn't start in the morning, I don't automatically start looking for a mechanic. Yeah. I start studying why is in this car working. I've got to do my best, you know. That's why if, um, if I have a puncher on the road and some guy comes to automatically help me, I'm like, hold on, have I, I asked you this. to help me? Yeah. Wait till I do my bit, then I know when to call you in. Yes. Like for me, if I'm changing my tire and some guy stops by to help me, I want them to help me lift the tire from the boot. Yeah. Because I have a back problem. I have a problem lifting that weight. Yes. But everything else you can do. Pinky, I can turn the boats. If they're heavy, I know how to stand on that. Yeah. So that, you know? Yeah. And, and if I turn it and it's rusty and it ain't go, then I can say, hey, brother, come help yeah. with this. Yeah. Assuming they're stronger than me. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I yes. really like that. Yeah, yeah. There was a question that I had that came to my mind, mm -hmm. and I, I just think that your last <laughs> statement <laughs> threw me off a little yes. bit. Yeah. Should we be afraid of working hard? But can we go Because back? there is this new thing of working hard or yes. working smart. Can we even go a step back? Sure. What is working hard? Mm -hmm. Some people will do this bit, and they go, oh, I'm tired. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm my age and I walk faster than most of the people I employ. Right. Let's start with that. Yeah. Damn it, you're 24 years old. Your kid's 57 years old and mm -hmm. she can walk faster than you. So one of the criteria I use when I'm recruiting staff is if I can walk faster than you, you ain't getting the job. I'm not gonna interview you. Wow. If you walk <laughs> faster, it means your brain moves at that same pace. <laughs> Like that and then theory. If, if you're not in a hurry to make something out of yourself. Um, the other thing is I take my staff along with me into meetings, into whatever. If I have to keep pausing to look back, where are you? And I keep turning to talk to you. First of all, that turning yes. is not easy for me because of my back problem. And why am I waiting? You're telling me, look at it literally. I, we are walking towards a client's office. You are behind me. You are walking slowly. I have to stop to wait for you. I have to keep turning my head this way. What are you saying? Joki, I'm here to work for your business, but I'm pulling you behind. Oh, wow. So I have a rule. If you can't be exactly at level with me when walking physically, then you are not the person to work with. That's, anybody who's worked with me knows that's a rule. What are you doing behind me? <laughs> and do you think a lot of us are honest enough to see that, even as leaders, because you are a leader in your workspace? Yes. Do, do you think a lot of people can lead like you do? I think most people are afraid they will be called the B word. Yeah. But you can say it here. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you see, if you say Joki is such a bitch, I'll be like, Yay. Damn it, you got it right. <laughs> I'm, the bitch, I'm yes. the bitch in charge, yes. you know. So when you become in charge, I'll take a step back. But right now I'm in charge. Yeah. So try and move me. <laughs> <laughs> so bitch means yeah. be in charge. Yes. I am in charge. I love this. Yes. I really so do. being called a bitch, being called Names. you are aloof, you yeah. are arrogant. Do you know it never offends me? I'm like, thank God you've noticed. Now can we move on? Wow. Yes. 
What advice do you give to people who are being called names because they are achieving? Okay, let me also qualify that. There are people who are downright nasty. Mm -hmm. So if they're called the B word, maybe they've been nasty. Yes. So if they didn't know they were being nasty, they should think twice. Really? Did I do yes. something bad? Yes. Okay. So I think reflection is also important. Right. If somebody tells me, Joki, you have been such a snob, yes. I'm told that. I've been told that several times. If by being, then I would, I will not show you, but I analyze it. Why did that person say, say that? I'm such yeah. a snob. If I'm such a snob because I didn't stop to say hello to everybody and agree to have coffee with them so I can give them advice on this and this, that I'm a snob because I went to an event and lasted 10, 15 minutes, which is typical me, that's okay. Mm -hmm. that's because it's are. a decision I made. It right. was a deliberate decision. Yeah. If somebody says I'm a snob, because they invited me to their place. And I said, you know what, Pinky, I really feel like just being alone at home this mm -hmm. Sunday, which is what I do. And somebody says I'm a snob. So I'm a snob because I preferred to keep company with me. That's okay then. This snob is keeping company with Jokey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you think it's important to self-reflect? Self-reflection is important. Look at yourself. Yeah. I think we can be called all names. Yes. How we take it. I'm not saying we reject it and we say, yes, yes, I'm that. Yes. And using the Nairobi slang, utadu. <laughs> I'm not saying we do that all the time. Yes. Use it as an opportunity for self-reflection. One thing I teach people to do, Pinky, is I, I challenged, uh, I have a fantastic girl who's been working for me. And each time I ask her, but what exactly do you want to be? One minute you, want, you say you want to do this. I give you tasks in that. You lose interest. Then I ask you, but what do you want to be? Then you tell me this. And as I was moving offices, I had to go through a lot of paperwork. Yeah. I brought to her my career plans and personal analysis from when I was age 24. They had yellowed. They were on full scope. You know when the full scope yes. paper was this yes. long? Yes, yes. And I told her, look at this. This is when I was in college. And she said, really? So you're serious when you tell us that you keep planning? I'm like, that's why I don't understand. Even when we go for a meeting or we're having a discussion, you don't have a notebook in front of you. In my house, one of the biggest challenge I have in the place I've moved in recently is what to do with my journals. Because there are hundreds of them. Wow. And uh, you find the debit and credit. Yes. What's, this is what I want to do, what's working for me, what's not working for me. So I've got a lot of that debit, credit, debit, credit. I've got a lot of task lists of things I strike every day, even on a Sunday. When I wake up, I have a task list. This is what I'll be doing. I have notebooks and different colored pens, even in my kitchen. Because I quickly, you know. Um, broadcast live mass. I have to attend the, the mass online. Yes. I have to go to the to Carrefour. Yes. I've got to watch this show on TV. I've got to brainstorm on this and this. I mean, brainstorm with myself. Yeah. Yeah. So listing and then striking them out as you do it, it gives you a sense of achievement. But you can't keep planning without visualizing. Let's talk about that, Pinky, because you are in film business. We're doing a film here. Yeah. You cannot plan silently in your head. We have five senses. Mm -hmm. How, ideally, we should be using all of them at the same time if we can. Really? Yes. Okay. That's why when you write something, when I say something, you might easily forget. It's human. Yes. But if I say it and you scribble it somewhere, you will remember Routine. the art of writing it, yes. you remember visually seeing it and then hearing it. Three things. If I just say it to you and you say, okay, 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 <laughs> it's just one. And chances are you forget. Yeah. So talk about now your theme of unlearning. Yes. We've got to start, the only way to move forward is not to learn new things. By the way, 
I tell people there's a limit as to how many courses you'll attend. There's a limit as to how many motivation speeches <laughs> that you're going to listen to. <laughs> there's a limit. Yeah. Because if you don't remove the old, where the hell is the new going in? Yes. The brain is full yeah. of clutter. You haven't done spring cleaning of your brain. You have old things you learned from your grandmother who never stepped foot in an office or in the, or, or in the city. She taught you great values, they are great, but you've got to adjust them to the modern times. So you've got to spring clean them. When you spring clean and clean them a bit, you remove some of the bits that are not applicable. Then you have space for the new. new. The art of learning is really the art of unlearning. Oh my word. It's easier to learn than to unlearn. I agree. Try, try, okay, Pinky, try, you're, you're a right handed person, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Try writing with your left. Exactly. How long will it take you? Very Even long. your entire, if you yes. repeat your years of your age, it's still difficult. Yes. So why do we assume unlearning is easy? It is so goddamn difficult. Mm -hmm. Yet we need to unlearn so as to learn. Jockey, I mean, I wish <laughs> <laughs> there's so much that you can teach us, right? There's so, so much you can teach us. Um, let me also correct that phrase. It's for the learner. When the learner is ready, the teacher, the teacher appears. appears. And there are teachers everywhere we go. Yes. Even that security guard, when you're entering a compound, the one who's giving you the sanitizer and taking your temperature, there's a lot to learn from him. But are you ready to learn? It's a mental attitude. We should be a sponge. Everywhere you go is an opportunity to learn. But we block it at times because we think we know everything, at times because we think that person cannot teach me anything. So it's, we have to carry ourselves in, li in life with an attitude of I'm ready to learn. How, what are the signs, Pinky, that one is ready to learn? Silence. God gave us one mouth and two ears at that ratio deliberately. Hear more than you are speaking. <laughs> that if is you're powerful. Like, but you're like, yeah. When will you ever hear other people? Yes. Who made you an expert on everything? Yes. Okay? So, silence. Mm -hmm. Silence is good. If you keep quiet, you will hear. Yes. Then make a distinction between listening and hearing. Many of us listen, yes. but we don't hear. I wish I could say that in Kikuyu because Please the say translation of that. <laughs> Please go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm on the road now. Let's go and leave English. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll also ask you to say something in Gujarati. <laughs> <laughs> so now, there are people who tell you, I'm listening, I'm listening. Mm. But you know, you are a parent. You know it. You can be talking to your kid and tell you, I'm hearing, mom, I'm hearing. I'm, I'm listening, mom. Yes. I'm listening, mom. But you know they're not hearing. Yes. The same thing with adults. Adults, we do that, that, that a lot. Yeah. There's, to me, I know you're hearing if you're responding. Like now you're nodding. You're looking at me straight in the eye. You're asking a question based on what I've said. Then you are hearing. Yes. You're not just listening. Yes. So, and taking notes as well. If I'm talking to young people, the first thing I say, where's your notebook? Mm -hmm. The other day, some girl came to me uh, for a mentoring session. And she was oh, yes, that's so good. I must practice that. Why have you written it? Yeah. Why don't you have a notebook? <laughs> and she said, I have it. It's in my bag. <laughs> uh, and I told her, I'm more than double your age. And I'm, I have a notebook on the table. Yes. I'm scribbling stuff. All Where are time. you scribbling? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So the art of hearing and listening yeah. distinguish those two. Yeah. Um, and I'm losing track of what we're talking about. But we're talking about how do you make sure you are learning. Yes. You're learning if you feel challenged. Challenge is that, oh, I hadn't thought of it that way. Yet it's a basic thing. Because these days, we are not learning new things. We are just learning the same thing in okay. a different way. Yes. Why? Because environments are changing. Mm -hmm. What pinky you could do when you are young, single girl, modeling and whatever. Same principles when you are a mom, a wife, a businesswoman. 
application is different. Very different. Very different. Yes. Yeah. At one time, your mom was the one guiding you. She was taking care of you. Now you're older. Your mom is uh, you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're older, and your mom is also older. Yes. Rose even reverse. Absolutely. You realize you are like now the parent taking care of your parent. Yes. So principles change. The way you do it with your kids will be different with the way you do it with your mom. Yes. Yeah. So there you are. So much. And it's time to unlearn. It's time to unlearn. But unlearning is not easy. It's tough. And it takes. So what are the tricks to unlearning? I said um, distinguish between listening and hearing. Two, practice. Practice may not make us perfect, but it makes us better. Better. Exactly. And perfection is not attainable. Perf I feel. Perfection is not attainable. Yeah. It's a moving goalpost. Exactly. It's a moving goalpost. And I always say it's great to be imperf imperfect yes. while you seek perfection. I love the phrase imperfectly perfect. perfect. That's powerful. Imperfectly perfect. Because you're saying, I know I'm on a journey, I'm learning, and there's still a lot more to do. Thank you so much, Joki. <laughs> I think we need to invite you back here. <laughs> There's so much wisdom that you have. Like you said earlier, yeah, yeah. it's wisdom. We are not older, we are wiser. We are, wise. we are wiser, yes. We are Super. wiser. Great. So if you'd like to win a phone from Safaricom, all you need to do is subscribe to their postpay. I'll give you those details below. But in the meantime, Joki and I would love to hear from you. What, what do you think of this conversation? <laughs> what did Joki teach you? Thank you so much, Jockey. Thank you so much, Pinky, for inviting me. You know me. You call me. I come. I, I'm so I'm grateful. I'm just wondering I know why it didn't happen earlier. Well, I think because we needed you to teach <laughs> us how to unlearn. I'm so yes. grateful um, and thank very you. humble because I know you're a very busy person. And I thank you for taking, carving out some time for us. I'm home. not a busy person. I just fill up my day a lot. Yeah. But I'll make a slot on things that I feel are very important. Thank you yes. so, so much. Remember, on this show, we encourage you to be extremely authentic, and we want you to show up as that person. Watch more of these shows and be brave. Unlearn to relearn. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again. Bye-bye.